Hey there guys, welcome on back to Any Fantasy. Today we are going to be talking about a lot of dark, gritty, supernatural, bizarre things that Disney has tried to hide from the public. We're going to be talking about death, ghosts, um, and a v something that on the surface looks like a very dark cartoon and is a little bit but has a wholesome message at the end. This is only part one of this stuff because I um, would really like to do some of this more often in the future. But anyways, without further ado, let us talk about the dark Disney. All right, so first up, we have this tale on the ghost hoax. So have you ever wondered or seen the not wondered, but seen the videos of the ghosts roaming at Disneyland? Have you ever heard of the tale of the candle? We will return to that candle tale in a little bit, but for now let's look into these videos. One of these videos looked very real, in the end it was a stunt. On October 24th, 2009, the viral video of a happy haunt wandering outside of the haunted mansion was debunked. The video you see shows a supposed ghost walking outside of the mansion. Now, this looked very, very real. So we all had to ask ourselves, are ghosts real? Of course, you have the people who say it's all camera effects, which is very true in many of these sightings. This time, though, a man went out in all white. Then with VFX, the magic was made. This was all shot overnight. So this means that Disney let people do this, possibly as a publicity stunt. On LaughingPlace.com, I found a tweet from Christopher, Christopher Cantwell, and it reads, Oh, and also internet, we did these too. The famous Disneyland ghost videos. Yep, us. Stuntman dressed in white, laid over clean footage and out through VFX overlays. Shot in the park overnight. I love that they live on. So, of course, Disney let these guys get away with that one because I'm sure it boosted their publicity or something like that. Um, but anyways, <clears throat> now let's talk about Mr. One Way. Now, Mr. One Way is a very creepy ghost story, I'd say. It's a little bit interesting. Not really. I guess I would say eerie. The one ghost who stood, oh, well, also, actually, I don't know if I included the ghost standing on the class's castle, but we will be talking about Mr. One Ray right now, and then a ghost by Snow White's um, fountain. Well, whatever. It's all the same. Anyways, Mr. One Way is only encountered if you are riding Space Mountain in a single rider mode. He will sit by you. That is if the spot isn't filled. He is supposed to have red hair. Mr. One Way is the spirit of a man who died on the ride, but he enjoys this ride and rides it until the end of time. Here is the biggest problems with this. No one has died on Space Mountain. A woman did get very sick while riding Space Mountain and then died after, but not on the ride. There are many incidents of death after the ride, but nothing on the ride. I did the research. Now, here is his official origin story. One day, a guest encountered a red-haired man in line. The man seemed odd because the man was unaware of recent Disneyland changes. The guest was seated next to the red-headed man, but at the end of the ride, the man the man, red-headed man, disappeared. When he reported the issue to a cast member, the cast member told him that no one was seated next to him. Now, it's a very short origin story, but it is quite interesting what this tale is. Now, I think it's pretty false. Um, I will be making probably a scary story for... Uh, Halloween on my encounter with Mr. One Way. Uh, and uh, yeah, now let's move on to the wishing well incident. 
Now, if you don't already know, Disneyland has this cool little Snow White wishing, wishing well somewhere near the castle. Now, this is only in Disneyland, if I remember correctly. It might actually be in Disney World. I can't remember, though. Um, I've been to it. It's really nice, relaxing. It's opened all hours of the day until, of course, the park closes. You can just sit there, soak in the nature around you. Just have a break. I don't know. Maybe you buy a hot dog or a sandwich or a corn dog or a turkey leg and then you go sit over there or your $15,000 churro and uh, you sit there and eat it. Um, but during operating hours at night, some Disney villains were taking pictures with some guests. We can now see a ghostly man sitting down near the Seven Dwarfs and Snow White. Now, it's a little bit stupid, the video that you're seeing right now. It is uh, pretty false, in my opinion, and it looks very computer-generated stuff. Uh, or like camera glare or reflection, I don't know. But it always gives that unsettling vibe when you see ghosts at Disneyland. Now, back to an old-fashioned ghost tale, possibly the most infamous one. Spooky, but not horrifying. Once upon a time, in a mystical land called Disneyland, there was a man named Walter Elias Disney. He built an old-timey American town called Main Street, USA. This was kind of where he grew up, and it was his way of bringing his home to California and into Disneyland so he could share it with everybody. In that town, there was a fire station, and it still is there today. This fire station was made with two stories. The bottom one contained a fire truck, a fire pole, and some other fire fighting, firefighter stuff and gear. Kind of just go in there and take a picture and like, hey, I made it to Walt Disney's fire station. Now, it's very a famous fire station because Mr. Disney made the second story a private room for him and his family. Now, if Mr. Disney ever wanted to stay overnight, maybe he had in-laws coming out or something. I don't know. Maybe... I don't know who came over, but uh, maybe he wanted to vacation at Disney himself with his family. This is where they would probably stay. It's very nice, private, and he literally was inside the park. After Mr. Disney died, though, a candle would stay lit in the top room. Now, according to numerous accounts, a maid went up into the room to clean at night. She turned, off, uh, turned a candle out near the window, but then... It lit again. Just instantly, she then turned it out again, but it reignited all on its own for a second time. At this point, she was terrified, and now every night the candle stays lit in remembrance of Disney's soul. Some say Mr. Disney's spirit remains up there, and he lights it when the candle flickers out. Now, this is inherently false because. The reasoning? Mr. Walt Disney's head remains under the park. Yes, you've heard this right. It's an old tale and legend that's pretty stupid but funny that Mr. Disney has his head cryogenically frozen. Now, legend has it that Dis Mr. Disney always wanted to advance society to the next level, which is proven fact. He was a pioneer of many theme park inventions and movie inventions. He was the very first man to make a full-length cartoon short that showed in theaters, also the first full-length animated movie. On top of that, he even created the first ever live-action animated film, Mary Poppins, I'm pretty sure came before Roger Rabbit. One of the two did. <coughs> Sorry, but they were both made by Disney. And... So go check out Roger Rabbit and Mary Poppins. And now the uh, Chippendale Rescue Rangers, which is actually cartoon and CG. And I guess maybe some live action. I haven't seen it yet. But those are all the types of things that he made. He also made like the very first steel tubed coaster, which is Matterhorn. Anyways, back to our legend. It is said, has been said in many times, many ways that Walt Disney rose his head under Disneyland. If you've seen Star Wars, then imagine a Camino-like facility under Disneyland that houses Walt Disney's head. It's called cryogenics, cryogenically freezing your head. And what this would allow 
is that in the near future, we could defrost his head and attach it to a cyborg. And then he would just basically, essentially be like an AI intelligent cyborg thing. I don't know. It's super stupid. And like, there's so many things that can debunk it. But people believe that Walt Disney's head lies under Disneyland and that he'll come back someday. So yeah, now we've learned that Disney has a lot of weird problems and supernatural incidents and ghosts cheating death. Now are they real? I think, yeah, kind of. It's an inside job probably made by the cast members trying to hype up Disneyland Disney with like the supernatural world, you know, there's like all those supernatural geeks out there who share their scary stories online. So it's a business tactic. And then you get more buzz around Disney in literally every way that they can. And so I believe that it's all publicity stunts. Some of it might just be camera tech issues, but uh, it works out in the long run for them. Now, let's move on to the darkest subject we'll probably be talking about today uh death now there have been people that it's not just people that died at disneyland but as we will see right here we must be talking about the possibility of real life human bones that are used on pirates of the caribbean i'm not even exaggerating by this about this according to sfgate.com the Imagineers didn't have the technology to replicate skeletons for pirates. So what did they do? Go on some cultish murder spree? Did Disney com- Did the Disney company go to a cemetery at like 2 in the morning and just dig up bones? No, no, and no. It's even better. Well, even grimmer and more intriguing and uh, disturbing on many levels. Disney Imagineers, rather just went to UCLA to purchase skeletons and these skeletons were going to be used for science. You know, there's a lot of people, scientists and people like that who are like, when I die, use my body for science. Well, um, they're used for a Disney attraction, not science. At least if you were buried at UCLA, then you were used as a Disney attraction prop. Now, this didn't actually last forever because according to this quote from Jason Voorhees' book, How to Steal a Skeleton from UCLA and Give it to Disney. No, I'm just kidding. No, actually in Jason Sorrell's book, Pirates of the Caribbean from Magic Kingdom to Movies, Guillermo, who he worked on the ride, I guess, um, states, quote, Eventually, as fake skeleton technology improved, a new generation of Imagineers replaced the real bone, the real ones, which were later returned to their countries of origin and given a proper burial, end quote. So in the end, these bones were actually buried, but the legend has it that the headboard skull is actually still real. People really do believe that the headboard skull never was taken down and it is still a dark easter egg that disney has a real living well not living but a real person's head on a headboard now it's very disturbing when you see it side by side it looks pretty real at least to me it does now we're gonna talk about um i think five deaths now, these are very dark, and if you listen to Random with Liam's podcast, I am I think he mentioned these first two, which if you have not listened to Random with Liam, check it out in the description down below. I will have a link to his Spotify podcast. He makes amazing content, and he makes dark content like this sometimes. Now, September 22nd, 2000, Toontown, Disneyland, USA. On this grim day, Brandon Zucker fell out of his Lenny cab. He was pinned down by an oncoming cab. Brandon suffered secure brain damage that left him unable to walk or talk. Brandon was only four years old when this occurred. 
Disney thankfully settled a lawsuit out of court to pay for his medical procedures. When he was 13, he sadly passed away and never fully recovering from the brain damages. Now, this is a very dark story. And, you know, in 2013, of course, uh, or, you know, it was it was a big story when he died. Uh, it was really sad. And I'm sure Disney was sad as well. Um, it is a little bit slimy and greasy of Disney to just settle it outside of court. Uh, like being Disney, I don't know how to think about that because I think what they did here is they didn't want to be seen in the court system because they knew that they would win. So maybe this was Disney just being nice and be like, hey, we are going to pay for this because this is all our fault. And then, of course, like <clears throat> now they have uh, monitors on the bottom of those things that are on the right. Sorry, water drink time. Um, so like if you get in the way, you trip the monitor and then it like beeps and everything freezes. So July 8th, 1974 possibly the most infamous on our list, or second most, I would say. Meet Deborah Gail Stone, 18 years old, engaged, and is a hostess on America Sings Attraction at Disneyland. America Sings has only been open for about a week. A week. This is crazy, because this, actually, I'm pretty sure, this gruesome death ended america scenes but at least the animatronics were recycled and thrown into country bear jamboree or something like that or no maybe a splash mountain anyways um it has only been open for about a week and on this fateful day deborah was on the to the left of the stage greeting guests over a microphone at about 11 p.m pst that evening she was crushed in between the walls to make matters so worse it has been reported that before her death she was on the phone with her fiance and that you could hear the screams the audience could hear the screams as she was getting crushed october 2010 paris a 53 year old man is cleaning on it's a small world Another cast member flicks a switch and the ride starts up. Our 53-year-old cleaner gets trapped under the boat. He is dragged under the boat and rushed to the ER. He dies in the ER because of injuries. Now, that was obviously in Disneyland Paris, and that's actually one I didn't know about. But it's very sad. It's very sad. In 2009, Orlando, Florida, on Disney World grounds, a very shocking and disturbing incident occurred. This is the most infamous and possibly well-known one because this one cost Disney 24 million in damages and like that was a big news story and just the horrific incident itself. Now, no, we are not talking about the time that that little boy was unattended by his parents and got snapped by a gator and died. No, we're not talking about that one. We are instead talking about a monorail incident. Now, there's a couple different ones, but this one involves Austin piloting the blue, the purple monorail. He ended up parking uh, in a spot, in, like his carriage, and it was stationary. That's what they call like the little car things. But then another monorail carriage crashed into him. Now, the authorities rushed over and attempted to break Austin out once, of course, they were contacted. But Austin died. No one else was harmed, thank God. But still, it is a horrific event. Um, and then it was later revealed that it literally all could have been avoided only if the panel operator was paying attention and doing his job and switched B9 from one di direction to the other. So, yeah. That cost Disney 24 million, you know, it was bad. It was really bad. And then our final death um, to talk about. One day, a parade was going on. Beauty and the Beast crushed Pluto. Javier Cruz was a 38-year-old man 
in the Pluto costume. He was dancing in the parade as Pluto, as he was supposed to. But then he was tripped, or but then he tripped. He was crushed. Cruz's co-workers sadly had to lift the float off of his dead body using a forklift, and then of course see his dead body. No visitors actually witnessed this horrific event, so that's really, really good. <laughs> But the most disgusting and vile part of this is the fact that Disney was only fined for a very small $6,500 on safety violations. They got off with their own performer getting crushed by a vehicle for $6,500. Let that sink in for a minute. All right, finally, we're going to end our video on a cartoon that has been wildly taken out of context, I think. You have probably seen the pictures of Donald being a Nazi, and you might think to yourself, did Disney actually make this? Well, I don't know how to pronounce this, but you, you can see the name, and I'll try to for her face was released in 1943 at the very beginning of the year, January 1st, actually. This cartoon depicts the life of a Nazi soldier. Donald is shown reading Mein Kampf and saluting to the Nazi order. It shows the horrors of Nazi Germany and showing you it's like anti-Nazi propaganda. So that's good, you know? Like, it's like, these are the Nazis, this is what they do to their soldiers, this is their cult, and we need to beat them in the war. And it then, of course, wraps up in good Disney fashion, where Donald wakes up from his nightmare and sees Lady Liberty outside and is in his American flag pajamas in a very patriotic bedroom of his, and he salutes to Lady Liberty and is proud to be an American. Now... It's a very nice and wholesome ending, and this cartoon is wildly taken out of context because what they see is a lot of, like, the entire 95% of this short, 99% actually, is Nazi Germany uh, and Donald. And it's really bad when you look it up online and you just see him reading out of Mein Kampf for him doing this, as you can see with the, like, bullets and saluting to the Nazis. But I think that, honestly, they should come out and be more proud of this. It would really make them more patriotic. It's like, hey, look, we pushed anti-Nazi propaganda to, and uh, it ended in very patriotic fashion. Well, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed today's uh, video here. And that was just volume one, you guys. That, like, I... I spent a while on that script. You'll see all the sources down below. And there's a lot of things in those sources that I didn't include. Like other stories that I could have. But be excited. And be ready. Because. Um, that like This is a crazy. Crazy. Um, thing. Like these stories are crazy stuff. I hope to do like more dark and deep dives into companies and stuff like that. In fact, this is going to be releasing on Monday. So um, on Wednesday this week, look out because I have the very first any sports interview with um, another Elevation youth leader. But we're going to be talking shoes and sports and stuff like that. All that fun stuff. A little bit of Legos actually also. Um, or Lego, sorry. Uh, and then next Monday, I am making, probably it'll rank in about an hour and a half to three hour video. Because it is me ranking every Marvel superhero or character. It's like 250 plus has this giant tier list, and I'm going to give my reason why on everybody. So, it's going to be a lot, guys.
but it'll be a lot of fun. And keep on listening to any cast on the podcast. Keep on tuning into our YouTube content. And of course, go check out Random with Liam. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to do the Miss Marvel and Kenobi reviews and keep up with the NBA finals, which we, uh, as of the day that I'm recording this, we uh, witnessed the Golden State Warriors lose to the Celtics because they choked in the defense and uh, it all went downhill once the three-pointer was cast up but I believe that the Warriors can win and they will and they should get the victory and keep on listening to my content peace